DDR5, 6600, 7200, 8000 for your new Threadripper or Threadripper Pro workstation. And V-Color. You saw V-Color in the title. Come for the memory review, or at least some insight on DDR5 memory in 2025, and where it's taking us in next generation Threadripper workstations. This is 7000 series, 9000 series, hasn't launched yet at the time that I'm doing this video. But stay to learn how the true DDR5 memory is probably throttling and you don't even realize it. I'll show you a quick, easy way to test that on Linux. And uh, I'll talk about some memory as well. All right, so I ordered some memory from V-Color because I don't have any contacts with V-Color. And these came from Newegg. So this is DDR5-8000. It comes in a fancy box, look at that. It's DDR5-8000 RDIM 96 gig, 24 gigs by 4, 8000. I've, I've repacked this somewhat hastily, so look over me. And I also have another separate kit, DDR5-7200. 7200 kit, 8000 kit. Two different kits of memory. 96 gigabytes of memory for the 8000 kit, 128 gigabytes of memory for the 7200 kit. There's some differences. It's interesting. Let's start with the 8000 kit. Look at the fancy box. The box is so fancy. We open it and inside we have a V color card and ooh, a polishing cloth. Look at that. We open the little, the little card. Oh, look at that. It's got a, here's a dim, it's a dim ruler. That's a pretty cool accessory. We are honored to part with you and uh, partner with you in upgrading your computer. This product represents Pinnacle of Air technology. We designed to achieve peak performance. Thank you for choosing us, V-Color. I mean, this is the DDR5 8000 kit. I mean, you're choosing the 8000 kit because you want the Pinnacle of performance, right? And it comes with a fancy thing. I paid extra for that. <laughs> I'm gonna be scathing in a minute, don't worry. All right, cool, thank you, you're welcome. Again, you know, reach out, it'll be fine. All right, so polishing cloth, I haven't opened this. And then in the box, we have another box. And then in this box, we have two more boxes. And then in these boxes, we have the memory. There you go. 24 gigs. Look at it. It's quite fancy. We're going to put this in our Gigabyte Aero D system, GRX50 Aero D. Now, this system, this motherboard from Gigabyte, was one of the most temperamental motherboards when Threader per 7000 launched, about anything beyond DDR5 6000. This is a Rev 1.1 board. There's actually three versions of this board, Rev 1.0, 1.1, and 1.2. I gave away my 1.0 Rev, uh, Rev board way back a long time ago. And I think the ones you buy now are Rev 1.2, but this is a Rev 1.1 board. And I've updated the BIOS as of uh, June 25th. So it's 12.13. This BIOS has some black magic in it because fast memory works fine on this board. I thought this board was gonna be my temperamental board. That is not so. Uh, there are similar BIOS updates available for the ASUS TRX50 and the ASRock TRX50 WS, and the situation improves generally across all of those boards. There are some gotchas, like the CPU can be kind of sensitive to mounting pressure. You know, it's not a guarantee that it's going to work beyond DDR5-6000 uh, even on this platform. I mean, maybe. We don't know what the guarantees are that are coming down the line from AMD for the new Threader per 9000 series, but it's going to be better than... Threader per 7000 series. But remember, Threader, Threader per 7000 series was only 5200, and the JetX standard is actually 5600. And so not all the plumbing was there when this platform launched to fully support 5600. And it turns out that the work has been put in, and the insane, crazy, awesome super engineers have reached into the past and been able to bring 5200 up to 5600 and beyond. At least that's what I'm discovering on our platforms here. So in, in this video, we're testing on the Aero D and the ASRock TRX50 uh, WS. And I've been able to coax those boards into consistently working at 7200 and 88 or 8000 if you're willing to hold your mouth right just a little bit, which is better 
in general than the desktop AM5 experience for desktop class memory. Now this is registered error correcting memory. It can also be a little misleading. When you're running a DDR5-8000, you can actually be having some errors under the hood that are being silently corrected because this is error correcting memory. But you actually don't want that situation because it hurts overall performance and it hurts overall inst uh, stability because eventually you're gonna run into a situation where it's not able to do the correction and the system crashes or the piece of software crashes. But I've been surprised that 6600 and 7200 are miles more stable than they had been on this exact same hardware. I mean, this is the 7980X system that we have on my test bench here. And this, this, configure, this exact configuration, I struggled to, to get you know, 6600 to be stable. And now psh, it's a walk in the park. Now for our other kit of memory, this is the V-Color 7200 kit. This one is actually the one I recommend. I don't recommend that one. This one has built-in heat spreaders. It looks like it's completely different, but this, these heat spreaders, I bet you, I bet you money, the V-Color goes back and adds heat spreaders to these because of what I'm gonna show in just a second. But these heat spreaders make an incredible difference in the performance of this memory. What most people don't realize is the DDR5 will silently throttle when the temperature exceeds a certain threshold. And this seems to be different from kit of memory to kit of memory to kit of memory. I've seen, this is anecdotal, but I've built some tools to make it less anecdotal going forward. But in the past, I've seen the threshold where throttling starts to creep in as low as 65 degrees C. For these from V color, it's around 75, 74, 75 degrees C, 73, 74, 75. Above 70, I think is uh, when you should start to worry. But this memory will start to throttle at about 70 degrees C. This, because it has the built-in heat spreader, it's a lot harder to get this memory up to 70 degrees C, especially when you're working in short bursts. I can run a three minute workload with Intel memory latency checker, and we can start to see that this, this memory throttles. So let's, let's start with the DDR5-8000 on our gigabyte system here, and let me show you what that looks like. Is it booting? As with DDR5, we gotta wait a little while for it to train. Now, I've opted for the cheap kits here, the cheap ER kits. You know, it's still over $1,000. Um, 96 gigs, 128 gigs. If you're going for a Threadripper, like a good sweet spot for Threadripper TRX50, in my opinion, is 256 gigabytes. For WRX90, I think 256 gigabytes is sort of the starting point, and 512 gigabytes will make sense for a lot of people. Right now, I know that, you know, AMD says that this platform supports one terabyte. That would be 256 gig DIMMs, four of them. Uh, those are wildly, wildly expensive. The cost of the CPU is a rounding error right now when you're buying that much memory and the rest of the system. And if you're spending that much on memory, chances are you're gonna go for the WRX90 platform anyway. TRX50 does have some advantages. Oh, look, it's posting. Um, suspend resume works correctly, sleep and wake. It can work correctly on WRX90, but the reason that it's problematic on WRX90 is because the memory uses so much power. Ah, I miss going into BIOS. We need to set the Expo profile because these kits have built-in Expo. Now, if you're upgrading a kit, this is some you know very important notes about upgrading and, well, just DDR5 in general. DDR5 is very sensitive, very, very, very sensitive, not just the heat. So in this configuration, them, DDR5-A1 is not detected, but you can see clearly it's installed. Just having the fan physically sitting on the memory and a little bit of vibration from the fan vibrating the memory is enough to prevent this dim from training. Now, again, this is one of the most temperamental TRX-50 motherboards that there has been historically, but it is night and day difference compared to what it was on launch. And generally, you shouldn't have the fan sitting directly on the memory anyway, because this. Um, if you run into this kind of a problem, you can reseat the memory, like just take the dim out completely and move it to another slot and then move the, the dim from that slot to the other one. This is makes more sense off more often than just taking it out and putting the same dim back in. Um, 
they can also improve if you have instability, like there's crashing or memory errors, just physically moving which stem is located where. Now, if you're upgrading and your system's a little dusty, which is the situation that I ran into here, if you have just a little bit of dust or debris or anything like that in your memory slots, that can also make a difference as to whether or not it will be able to train successfully and be stable. It's good to use compressed air or something like that and sort of blow out the system and try to clean it because I had 64 gigabytes of memory in here with the 32 core um, 7970X and that was fine. That was pretty good for launch on, you know, Threadripper, uh, Threadripper 7000 series. But in 2025, you know, 128 gigabytes of memory it's on the order of about $1,000, give or take, which, okay, well, I mean, that is sort of a, a, a sad study in economic conditions and uh, the horrors of that. But 128 gigabytes or 256 gigabytes of memory makes more sense in 2025 for a workstation like this IMHO. And so here we are with our 96 gigabyte configuration, which is fine and 64 gigabytes of CPUs, but one of my DIMMs won't detect and it's because I've created this situation. So just be care. There's a lot of care. It is not, you must treat it with respect. It is a very delicate machine that requires respect. All right, we've gone through the expo square dance and not the, you know, getting all the DIMMs to show up and be stable and blah, blah, blah. It's always good to run memory tests before you do this as well. Memtest 86 from Passmark, anything like that, it's great. I just ran DMI decode T memory on the console so we can take a look at our memory configuration. So MLC is Intel's memory latency checker utility. And yeah, it works fine even on AMD Threadripper platforms and it's, it's great. I also like AMD HSMP. This is a hardware facility that you can enable in the BIOS, which I recommend that you do. It's not necessary to enable that to check for throttling, but it is useful as a second data point when we're doing testing. In this configuration, we should be able to clear 200 gigabytes per second. Well, I'll probably be a little slower than that because I'm also running an OBS recording in the background, but generally this platform, this configuration, this kit of memory should be able to clear 200 gigabytes per second. Oh, and incidentally, both of these kits of memory have latency on the order of about 90 nanoseconds. The 7200 kit, the latency is a little bit better than the 8000 kit, which seems counterintuitive, but remember the CL on that is, uh, the cast latency is uh, 40 versus 36. So that, that does make an impact. Both kits of memory are absurdly fast. And generally I would recommend the 7200 because of the heat spreader and you'll see why in just like 30 more seconds. So basically all I did with the HSMP is mod probe AMD HSMP because it doesn't load by default. And that shows us the fabric bandwidth. And you can see that as this is running, it's giving us a snapshot of what AMD's own internal telemetry is telling us is the infinity fabric bandwidth, which because the only thing we're doing right now is OBS recording. And that should be like kind of a lot, kind of a significant percentage of our theoretical max, 256 gigabytes per second. We well, can see even with OBS running, I'm getting about 181 uh, gigabytes per second, which is entirely reasonable. Now, while this is also running, our DDR5 memory is heating up. Uh, generally, if you're playing like a, like a JRPG, that's a good thing. In this case, not so much. Now, what we're gonna do is just run that same benchmark a second time. So as you can see, running memory latency checker back to back, our memory bandwidth is cut in half. It's 100 gigabytes per second now instead of 200 gigabytes per second. And we can see clearly on our thermal imaging that the little memory chips are at 75 degrees C, which is where the thermal throttling point kicks in. That also shows up in software. So like if you dig into the software sensors or you're running uh, Hardware Info 64, generally Hardware Info 64 is fantastic software and doesn't always seem like it's able to read the, the dim temperature or the correct dim, dim temperature. Some dims seem to underreport their temperature versus what we see on the FLIR. But um, yeah, this is thermal throttling and it's, they're silent. There's not anything in the system log. There's nothing in RAS daemon in this configuration to say, oh, the memory is throttling, which is bad. You're leaving performance on the table. What do we do about it? Well, you might, you might be saying this is an open air test bench. It's going to throttle. There's an air conditioner above my head that is blowing directly down on this. There is a steady stream of conditioned air going in this way. I can add a fan to the back if you want, but I can already tell you it doesn't make a difference. What does make a difference? We've been doing 3D printable shrouds. This is a thing that we discovered on Threadripper 7000 series. This is a shroud that uh, I designed that goes with a Silverstone 4U case and the Fractal, it'll work with the Fractal, the TRX-50 or the WRX-90. And this mounts on the back for the small fans. And then this gives you plenty of airflow over the RAM without being ludicrous. 
Uh, this cooler is another one that I designed that will pull air over the dims in a uh, fractal case. Uh, fractal Meshify and Define the seven series, I think the ones that were from 2024. This one's not perfect. I really went, meant to go back and redesign this a little bit. This is really not like super awesome, but with a relatively decent airflow fan, you're gonna get enough airflow over the dims. You also have to use a uh, an AIO cooler with this. This was not designed for a tower cooler because this sits right in the edge of the socket, basically. So, and your rear IO again is here. So this is, tells you what you're working with. So these are on the level one text forum. Uh, Amber, I think has designed some as well. So uh, some of our forum members have designed some. So let's get together and design stuff for properly cooling um, DDR5. But you know what else helps cool DDR5? These heat spreaders, these big giant silver heat spreaders. These are uh, like from the, <laughs> I grew up cutting my teeth on like DDR2. And so um, that was a long time ago. This is exactly the same setup the DDR2 had for a very, very long time. And then DDR3 and 4 were, were less dramatic. That, that was less true with overclock gamer memory, but like the volume production. But volume production server memory in that era, it was uh, heat spreaders just like this. And this heat spreader setup on the 7200 kit from V-Color works fantastically well. It will not fail in this benchmark. It will not throttle. It will throttle if there's no airflow over your dims. And airflow between the dims is a little bit more challenged when you've got these heat spreaders on your memory. But the heat spreaders are able to help the memory sustain load for a little longer than in this setup. I mean, this, this only ran for a couple of minutes and immediately they're throttling. And it's DDR5-8000 and it came in the fancy box. But these were just, you know, in a blister pack that were taped together with packing tape. And this is the better choice for Threadripper than that. Now, if you're thinking about getting, you know, WRX90, you need twice as much memory, ideally, and you'd order two of these kits. So you'd get two of these kits and it would be fine. Because notice they came in pairs. I ordered a kit, a kit of four, and I got four, but it wasn't a blister pack of four. And notice this was also a blister pack of two groups of two in another box. And it was a box within a box. So you got four. And they didn't bother to do that with this, which again is fine. V Color has done no wrong here. Um, this is among some of the best memory that you can get for this platform right now, IMHO. Let me be clear about that. But if you get the DDR5-8000, know that you're going to have to keep an eye on it and do some testing. Which, by the way, this Intel memory latency checker is one of the easiest ways to see if your setup is going to throttle memory. It's a quick, easy test you can do. you got to close everything else out in your system. Ideally, you don't have OBS running in the background. And you just run it a couple of times in a row and see if you get wildly different numbers from your system sitting there. Because your configuration might be 150 or 160 gigabytes per second or 180 gigabytes per second or 120 gigabytes per second or whatever. But it will be consistent across multiple runs. If it's not, then it's throttling. And if you do decide to pick up this or other stuff, and you want to use uh, our affiliate links or hit us up on the forum or, you know, ask questions, that would be greatly appreciated. These kinds of projects are supported by viewers like you and also subscribers on our Patreon and Flowplane and everything else. So thank you for em enabling this sort of mad, insane craziness. I greatly appreciate it. And that's been a quick look at our two V-Color kits of memory, DDR5-7200 and DDR5-8000. It's the Tras 5, I don't know, it's going to be in the lower thirds. It was in the lower thirds earlier in the video or hit us up in the forum. I'm going to listen to level one. It's been a quick look at some new exciting memory developments that really is for Threadripper 9000. But hey, it's working just fine on Threadripper 7000 as well because same motherboard. I'm genuinely surprised that motherboards from a few years ago are running this just fine. Mostly, don't set your fan on top of your memory. All right, I'm Windowless Level 1, signing out. You can find me in the Level 1 forums. So why does the polishing cloth come with the memory that doesn't have the shiny metal? Did they intend for the 8000 kit to need the heat spreaders? And then somebody was like, ah, oh, they don't need the heat spreaders. It's a relatively low density. They're only 24 gigabytes. Well, I've got news for you. You were wrong. The 8000 kit needs the heat spreaders.